Hi, my name is Monique. I live in my 2022 Ford Transit Connect van full time, and I am going to film part two of a Q&A video. If you, want, if you want to hear all the questions that I answered in part one, you can definitely look at that video first if you want. But in this video, I'm going to focus on two questions that I have been avoiding for a long time because I don't really like to talk about these topics. Um, but so many people ask me about it, so I'm just going to talk about it. The first question is my conversion story. So many people, especially a lot of my non-Muslim viewers actually, you guys are very, very curious about my conversion story. And a lot of my Muslim viewers have been asking me to make videos on how I pray. And, and I just like to keep religion private, so I don't really, I'm not going to make a lot of videos about that kind of stuff. I'm just going to do this one video talking about my conversion story and answering the question that my Muslim viewers have asked me and then that's it. That's it. And then the second question that people ask me a lot is why I'm vegan, how I became vegan, um, yeah that whole story. And I don't like to talk about that either because dietary choices is a touchy subject as well. It really angers people, it just angers people if a person eats differently than them. I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand it. But I try to stay away from the whole dietary topic. I don't like it. I don't I don't want the smoke. I don't want the smoke. And with me saying I don't want the smoke, please, if, if, if you know you're going to roll your eyes at a person talking about religion because you hate religion, it wouldn't make sense for you to watch this video. So please, I ask that you be kind in the comments because I'm very terrified to make this video right now. I have genuinely, I've had this YouTube channel for four years or so and I have ignored these comments for most of these years because talking about religion, politics, and diet scares me <laughs> in today's climate in the world. These things are hot topics that anger people. I have a good amount of Christian viewers and I have no desire to offend you, none at all. I have no desire to offend you. All of my family is Christian except my immediate family. I don't really know what they are. I think they're agnostic, but they read the Bible and my brother goes to church every blue moon but I don't think they consider themselves Christian, so I don't really know. But my extended family, most of them consider themselves Christian. I love my family. I have love for you all. I have no intention of offending you. If you feel like you're going to be offended by hearing a, a, the story of a person who used to go to church and who now is a Muslim, I, maybe you should skip this video as well <laughs> um, because I don't want to offend anyone. And I also, I'm just saying all the disclaimers right now, I also have no desire for anyone to come into the comments and say, oh, try reading my holy book, try looking into my religion. Well, what you didn't understand about Christianity was this. Well, what you need to know, when well, you got it wrong, where well, you went to the wrong church, go to my church, do this. I'm going to delete those comments. I feel like it's very disrespectful, especially if I tell you in the beginning of the video that I, I don't want those comments. I'm, I'm asking you. Don't try to convert me to something else. Don't try to convince me. Don't proselytize in the comment section. I, I am an adult who knows what I want and I do what I want. And I actually will do the opposite. If I feel like I'm being pushed to do something, you're gonna push me right into the opposite direction, even further. I have no intention. I am only discussing this topic because I've been asked about it a million times. My vegan story and my conversion story. I've been asked about it so many times and I feel bad for ignoring these people's comments and requests. This video is solely for the people who have asked me to talk about it. Yeah, so I just want to put that out there. Please don't proselytize. Please don't tell me, oh, I did it wrong. You just understood it wrong. This is what you need to read. Read this book instead and learn this. I've done all the research I need to do. I hope, I hope you understand. I'm not trying to convert you to anything and I don't want anyone trying to convert me to anything. I appreciate all my viewers of all different faiths, of all ethnicities, of all everythings. <laughs> I appreciate you all and just please let's be respectful with these two touchy topics. So with that being said, here is my conversion story for the people who want to know about it. I grew up going to church. My family was the type of family who would go to church every blue moon, particularly whenever we moved to a new place. Whenever we moved to a new state, my parents would get in this whole thing like, oh, we're going to start going to church for real this time. We're going to find us a church and we're going to go to church for real. Um, almost every time we moved to a new place. So I definitely went to church. I feel like in one of the places that we lived, I actually was in the choir or something. I was a little bit more involved in the church as a child. So I grew up going to church, but we never went consistently. 
You know, we were a typical black American family. On Sundays, we would clean the house and gospel music would be playing. We would play old school, we would play old school music and gospel music together and clean the house on Sundays. I had a little white Bible, this little white Bible that my parents gave me. Um, and I would even read that Bible by myself sometimes. I decided, you know what, I wanna see if this is really for me as a kid, but it makes sense, I was that type of child. So I secretly would read my Bible in my room. I don't know why I had, I don't know why I felt like I had to do it in secret. I don't know why, because my parents had Bibles. You know, I don't know why. But I was doing it in secret. So that's what, so that's a little bit about my childhood in the church. I remember as a child, I would sit in church and listen to the people say things uh, and it, it wouldn't make sense to me. And then I would see people have, you know, Holy Ghost spasms i'm not sure what it's called but you know when they get on the floor and they're shaking and things and it seemed kind of performative and it was just odd to me i didn't understand and, and you know people would cry when they were singing and i genuinely genuinely would think to myself why are you crying you're, you're just crying because the song is beautiful mariah carey could be singing a regular song right now and you would cry because her voice is beautiful whitney houston or whatever i would notice these people like it seemed like I don't know it just seemed very performative and we also went to uh, like white white type churches as well i hope that's not offensive but black churches are different than white churches um and the white churches were more calm and everything but still i felt like i didn't connect with what was being said so it got to the point where i was a kid i was young a preteen, maybe i don't know but i was pretty young and i told my parents that i did not want to go to church anymore it was not for me my parents said well you're going to go to church you know the whole you live in under my roof you're going to do what i say type of thing i was like okay but i want you guys to know that as soon as i am of age i'm done i'm only going to church right now because you're forcing me to and i'm not going to go to church anymore when i'm allowed to not go to church anymore <laughs> and i told them i wasn't going to celebrate christmas anymore either and um they would still make me come downstairs my dad would come in with his little camera and they would tell me come downstairs open the presents try to look happy but i was a kid like i stood on what i said i'm a person who likes to stand on what i say i don't just say things you know i try to i try to put my words into action so i was a, a very serious as a child telling my parents i don't want to celebrate christmas anymore you can have the gifts i don't need the gifts um i'm not about this life anymore but they would make me come downstairs and open gifts and record my mom would tell me oh you're no fun you're not like your brother your brother is so happy and fun and i would just be grouchy like opening my gifts and looking at the camera <laughs> because i didn't want to do it i didn't want to be a part of it i'd stop celebrating thanksgiving as a kid as a young person, I decided I wasn't gonna celebrate Thanksgiving anymore. I started, I was one of those people who started calling it Thanksgiving. <laughs> I was one of those people. So I didn't wanna go to church anymore. I didn't wanna celebrate Christmas anymore. I didn't wanna do any of that stuff anymore. And once I was older and I could make those decisions for myself, I stuck with it and I stopped celebrating it. I, I was trying to celebrate Kwanzaa for a minute, but then I think I learned that Kwanzaa was just some made up stuff anyways. Like, I don't even think they celebrate Kwanzaa in African countries. I don't know. Um, but I said, oh, that's just some made up stuff too. I'm not celebrating that. So I eventually became agnostic. And agnostic was right for me because I was still acknowledging that there is a creator of the universe and all that exists, but I didn't have to conform to the rules of some religious group. I could just acknowledge the creator and try to be a good person and that's all that was needed that's all i needed to do and i was cool with that for the rest of my life to just be agnostic to be agnostic and then i got older and i started going through a crisis i started feeling like everything in life was pointless like when i became an adult and i realized life is just work and bills i said i want no part of this like even to this day clearly i want no part of this this is life you just work and struggle and pay bills and that's it and then you die um so i went through a little crisis as in my young adult life realizing that this is what the world is and i i just didn't want to do anything anymore i didn't want to exist anymore so i i bought a book called the purpose driven life and i read that book and then at that same time i had a friend we'll call him nate and nate was like a junior preacher at his church he was very christian very into his church and around that time he contacted me and invited me to his church because he was going to give a sermon or do some kind of sermon 
like have a little part on stage. And I said, oh, thanks God, like you're giving me the sign. So I went, I was ready. I had a notepad. I brought a notepad and a pencil to church. <laughs> I was ready to take notes and learn something and learn about the purpose of life. And I was so excited, I was so ready. I said, okay, I, I can do, I, I think Christianity is gonna be for me this time. Nate really likes this church. He's always talking about his church to me. I had known Nate for a while and I was really, um, I was really excited. So I go to the church and it was just like all my experiences at all 50,000 churches I had been to in my life before. And I left there feeling very sad and I left there knowing for sure that it wasn't for me. That was, that's not for me. Even studying Christianity on my own, you know, without all the theatrics of church and all, just studying it by myself, um, it wasn't for me. It wasn't. Just, just, or just a few things, you know, honestly, in my opinion, Islam, Christianity, Jude, and Judaism are very, very, very similar. I feel like we have more similar, I feel like we have more similarities than we have differences, which is like that with most things in life. You know, they try to divide us on our differences, but we really are more similar as humans. But I truly feel like those three religions are very similar, but the things that are different are big things. They're only a few things, but they're very big things. You know, so that's how it was. Honestly, when I learned about Islam, a lot of that stuff I learned in Christianity because the religions are so darn similar. But it's just a couple of really big things that make the difference. So yeah, I decided that Christianity was not for me after going to church, that was my last time. And like I said, studying outside the church um, wasn't helpful for me either. And then at some point, 9-11 happened. And when 9-11 happened, I'm not exaggerating. I sound very, I might sound very stupid for this, but I did not know what a Muslim was. I did not know what Islam was when 9-11 happened. The most I, once 9-11 happened and they started talking about Muslims all the time in the media, in the media, I thought that Islam was a country in the Middle East because whenever they would talk about Islam, they would have a map of the Middle East or they would have cameras somewhere in the Middle East. So I said, oh, these Muslim people must live in the country Islam, which is in the Middle East. <laughs> I'm not joking. That's what I thought. I, I, I knew nothing about Muslims. I knew nothing about Islam. And the thing is, I had had Muslim friends before, but I didn't know they were Muslim um, because the girls didn't wear hijab and the guys, I don't know, I just didn't know. One of the guys I was really, really cool with throughout all of college, anytime we saw each other, we would sit next to each other and, and we would always choose each other for group projects. And it wasn't on any type of flirtatious thing ever. We were just cool with each other. We were hard workers. We took our courses seriously and we liked to work together because we knew we would both do the work and get it done. His name was Muhammad. Muhammad. I had no clue he was Muslim. I, knew, I didn't know a darn thing about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I knew nothing. I'm just saying that to let you know how little I, I knew about the religion before I became Muslim. And, and then after 9-11, they started talking about Muslims and everything. I noticed that they really wanted me to hate these people. And I have the type of mindset where if the media is telling me that something is very bad, then I'm gonna think, hmm, there's probably some good in it. And if the media is, t is pushing that something is very good, I'm gonna think, ah, I might need to stay away from that. It's probably bad. That's how my mind works after living on earth for a little while. <laughs> and seeing what the world has become and seeing how the media works that's how my mind works now so everywhere i look muslims are bad muslims are terrorists muslims hate americans muslims want to blow up america you know that's all i'm hearing about muslims so in my mind i'm thinking okay these muslims m might not be that bad I'm, i kid you not like I, I'm not someone who believes everything I hear on the media. So all the stuff they were saying, blaming literally everything on the Muslims. I said, nah, there's more to it. I don't know, I'll never know the full story, but I'm not gonna sit here and believe 100% of what these people are saying about these Muslims. And then I ended up meeting a Muslim a few years late, a few years later. And I was talking to him and he seemed intelligent. He didn't seem like he hated me for being a non-Muslim America American. He didn't seem like he wanted to, to blow me up. He seemed like every other person I've ever met before. So I met him and he was more verbal about his religion. He was a convert. Um, and since 9-11 had happened, I had more questions to ask. If I had met him before 9-11, I would have just been like, oh, you're Muslim? Okay, whatever. I don't know what that is, whatever. <laughs> but since 9-11 had happened and it was such a hot topic, I was more curious and I asked more questions. And I remember watching him pray. I would watch him pray all the time. I would see him pray often. 
And I remember thinking as an agnostic person, I love the way he prays. I want to, I want to show my gratitude to the creator that way. That seems like, you know, I, like I said, I wasn't atheist, I was agnostic. I still acknowledged a higher power. And I was very much interested in showing respect and gratitude for, the high, for my higher power in the best way that I could. And when I saw the way Muslims prayed, I thought that was the best way I have ever seen anyone pray. And I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it as an agnostic person. So I asked him to teach me how to pray that way, how to pray. And I was planning on pray, praying that way as an agnostic person. Eventually, I decided to take classes. I took classes, I went to a masjid. Some of you might know it as a mosque, but um, most Muslims that I know of call it a masjid. I went to a masjid, which is the holy place for Muslims. It's like a church for Christians, a synagogue for Jewish people, a temple for, I think, Buddhists, a masjid. So I went there and I signed up for a class for people who wanted to learn about Islam. And I was actually the first student. The class had just started and I was the very first student to sign up. And the teacher told me that she said, wow, you're my first student. And I thought that was a sign, but I wasn't looking too deeply into the sign because I also thought the whole church thing with my friend Nate was a sign, but that didn't end up working out for me, even though I really wanted it to at the time. So I was like, okay, maybe it's a sign, I don't know. But they just started, this, like if I had a week, if I had gone to that masjid a week before and asked about a class, the class wouldn't have even existed. She said she had just created the class when I came. And that class filled up very fast with women who were interested in Islam. It filled up so fast that eventually she had to shut it down because she was overwhelmed. She did not know that so many non-Muslim women were curious about Islam. And it was just her little self. She was one of the nicest humans I've ever met. And she became overwhelmed. And after a few years, she shut down the class because she, she didn't have any support and she could not handle the abundant amount of women who were just coming in wanting to sign up wanting to learn i thought i would just i thought it would just be me and maybe one other girl but it was a lot of us so i took a class i took a class on islam islam 101 and i learned about what their beliefs were and, and i took this class along with several other women took this class with no intention of becoming muslims so many women in that class had no intentions of becoming a muslim um, some of us ended up taking our shahada of course i did and a shahada is just a declaration you say to um, to make it official that you're Muslim. But honestly, but actually a lot of women did not end up converting. They just wanted to learn about Islam. They wanted to have knowledge. They don't want to get their information off Google or, oh, I have a friend who's a Muslim and this is what they told me. You know, we all wanted to go to a knowledgeable person and learn from them. And there are several women who did not convert, but they were very, but they felt more comfortable knowing about Islam. And that was my intention at first. You know, I wanted to just be able to, to win an argument. I wanted to know, I wanted to know what they believed, but I also wanted to just win an argument. So if someone came up to me and said, oh, you know, those Muslims this, those Muslims that, I could say, actually, no, I took a class and this is what they believed. That's not true. I don't know what you got off Google, yada, yada, yada. Like that was one of my goals. <laughs> which isn't the best thing. I don't know if you should take a class just so you could have rebuttals, just so you can be ready for a rebuttal when someone says something you don't like. But that was part of my intention, I'm not gonna lie. Because I don't like when people just go around saying negative stuff. Last year at the Beat Harvest, this girl was saying negative things about Amish people. And and people were just going along with it. And I, and I kind of low key checked her and said something to her in front of everyone because she was just making Amish people sound so horrible. And I was thinking, and I'm thinking, no, that's, you're just saying stuff like, why do you hate them so much? So many people just want to make religion seem so bad. It's it's you, it's the person, man, it's the people. <laughs> These Amish people just chill and live in their lives. Leave them alone. Anyways, that was my intention. I wanted to be able to defend Muslim people. But um, I ended up taking the class and I ended up staying in the class for a few years. And then obviously I decided it was for me. I quickly, it didn't take too long for me to learn that my beliefs were in line with the beliefs of Muslims. And I ended up taking my Shahada and I've been Muslim ever, ever since. And that's really my story. I feel like people are gonna ask, well, what exactly was it about Islam? What was it about Christianity you didn't vibe with? I'm not gonna get into too many details because like I said, I have Christian viewers and I respect you. I respect you and I don't want to offend you. So I don't wanna go into too many details, but I know people are gonna ask, they're gonna want specifics.
it's really simple like that's all there is to it i know people will go on google and say no muslims say this muslims say that you're a woman you can't do jack even though i'm a woman and i'm doing whatever i want but no there's all this other horrible it's very simple we pray five times a day which might not be simple to a lot of people actually <laughs> that's what i lead with when i say it's simple it's so simple you pray five times a day <laughs> which was very hard for me at first in the beginning but now it's 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 natural it's like drinking water i eat twice a day i pray five times a day it's natural but you know you pray five times a day you fast during ramadan and you believe in a higher you and you believe in a higher power obviously we have rules we like to be modest Although a lot of Muslims choose not to do that. A lot of Muslims, you wouldn't even know they're Muslim because they don't dress like a Muslim. They go to the club, they drink alcohol, they smoke. You know, we all have free will. We have free will. Unless you're in a country where they're a little bit more harsh. And it's not just Muslim countries that are like that. There are a lot of non-Muslim countries, a lot of places where they um, take away the freedom of the citizens. You know, in Islam, you don't drink. We have rules and everything. We definitely have rules. And I actually wanted more structure. I just, I crave structure. I come from a military background. Whenever I, we left the military world, I saw how civilians lived and it seemed so wild and unstructured. And to this day, I don't like it. I prefer structure. I really do not prefer the civilian world. If I could live on a military base again, I would. <laughs> So for, some, so for some people, the structure and the rules in Islam are a turn off. But for some of us, that is what we like and that is what we desire. And I like it for the most part. There are some things I still think for myself. There are things Musa and I disagree on. Musa is much more like he will follow whatever Islam says. That's what he does. And I'm the kind of Muslim who's like, mm, let me think about that. You know, even though I'm a Muslim, I still question Islam. I'm not scared to question my religion at all. I question it all the time. Sometimes it's to the point where I feel like it annoys Musa, but I don't care because that's who I am and I'm gonna be who I am. So yes, we have rules and I try to follow the rules as much as I can. I'm not scared to question things, but I do like the rules. I like the discipline. I like the, I like the structure of religion. I do. I live the unreligious life. I see the non-religious people and how they live, and I prefer Islam, and I prefer the structure. And that's cool. We're cool, we can all, you know, we can all want what we want and make our own choices. So those are some of the things that I liked about Islam. I like the structure, I like the way they pray. I like that the foundation of the religion is very simple, it's not complicated. I like that we are responsible for our own good deeds. These are a handful of the things specifically that caused me to gravitate towards Islam. And honestly, I didn't have to gravitate towards Islam because it is what I always believed. I just didn't know there was a religion that had more structure and more information about how to live this way um, until I learned about Islam. Yeah, so that is my conversion story. That is why I became a Muslim. Yes, there are some people who desire discipline and structure and rules. I know it sounds crazy in this world we live in where people are trying to get rid of all the rules. They're trying to get rid of anything. We should just be, it seems like people just want us to be wild and crazy and just say whatever we want, do whatever we want. Just, I don't know. <laughs> but um, there are some of us who actually like it because I know that people say, oh, religion is so oppressive and you can't do this, you can't do that. Some of us want the structure and the rules i just really want to convey that even with the way i dress no one forced me to do any of this no one forced me to do anything i dress this way because it was my choice when i first converted i was still going to the club i'm not gonna lie i was still going to the club i was still hanging out with men i was still wearing booty shorts i will tell you all the story of how i started dressing this way because it did not happen instantly um, I didn't start wearing hijab until years after I converted because I converted in secrecy as well. I do everything in secrecy because I know people in my life are going to try to convince me not to do stuff. So I do everything in secrecy. And then once I'm, and then once I'm firm in my belief, then I tell people because they can't tell me anything once I feel firm in my choice. So, so I didn't wear hijab for, for years after I converted and I was still dressing like a normal Westerner. And one day I was going to the club with my guy friend, really close guy friend from college. We will call him Josh. Josh had a crush on me. Um, I hung out with a group of guys. There were a couple of us girls. 
and I knew the guys had a crush on me. Unfortunately, I was one of those girls who was kind of like a tease around the guys who I knew had a crush on me. I knew Josh had a crush on me. I knew some of the other guys in the group had a crush on me, you know, and the other girls in the group. But I also knew that I was not interested in any of them in the least bit. But you know, I was still flirty and stuff, which is hor a horrible thing to do. Um, Josh and I, we were very close and we hung out all the time and we were going to the club with our little crew and I was wearing these booty shorts with some heels and I'm all legs you guys I'm all legs I'm I'm not a short woman I'm not super tall but I'm definitely not short and I'm all legs and 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 he kept complimenting my legs in these shorts and heels my legs look extra long when I wear heels I'm six feet tall in heels maybe just under six feet tall so i just have these long legs i walk in the club looking like a gazelle with my heels and my in my shorts and josh kept complimenting me all night he just kept saying oh my gosh you look so nice you look so nice your legs look so nice i love your legs and he would like touch my leg and like just caress my leg quickly and then other men in the club were doing it as well um just randomly you know how it is in a club it's just men think they can touch you whenever they want one man actually grabbed me and kissed me and it infuriated me because it was so dark i could not see who he was to this day i have no clue who kissed me and i was terrified that i would get herpes i almost cried i left the club immediately this was a different day i left the club immediately because i was just upset and scared and i just knew i had herpes for the rest of my life <laughs> but luckily i but luckily that didn't happen so josh was complimenting me and touching my legs and other guys were touching my legs and I remember feeling frustrated that they thought they could just touch my legs like that even though I was dressed that way and it frustrated me and I started and I was Muslim at this time I just wasn't practicing I just wasn't a practicing Muslim but I had already converted and I had been learning about modesty and things like that and not hanging around men because of this type of thing um, so I remember going to the bathroom and looking at myself and I was like darn my legs do look good like I really do look cute in this outfit why am I letting all these men see this? They're not my man. They're not doing anything for me. They're not providing for me. They, they, I shouldn't be allowing all these men to see me. And not only see me, but they're copping feels. A lot of these dudes are copping feels. Whenever you walk through, it's so crowded. They act like they, you know, they act like they're accidentally touching you. But they're like, you know, pinch your thigh, grab your, grab you by the waist, all this stuff. And I'm allowing it to happen. It doesn't have to happen. I ended up leaving. I wasn't mean to Josh or anything, you know, but I told him I was going to go home and I went home and I threw away all my shorts and tank tops and booty clubbing clothes that night. I threw them all away and that was the day I decided I was going to start dressing a little bit more modestly and it was slow, you know, and it was, it happened slowly. Um, I, I didn't have the money, I didn't have the funds to just buy a whole new wardrobe. So I did what I could with the clothes that I had, the long sleeve shirts and things. All my pants were booty tight, but whatever, at least they were pants, they weren't shorts. You know, I did what I could. And ever since then I started dressing modestly. And then eventually I started putting on my scarf, you know, the more, the more Muslim looking way. Even to this day, Muslims criticize me for how I wear my scarf, but um, I don't worry about them. I move I do things on my own time anyone who's gonna try to force me to do something is gonna have the opposite effect you know I don't I, I'm not gonna let someone push me to do something I'm not ready to do because then it's not real and then it won't last when I do it on my own time that makes it more real because it was my choice and then I'm, I can be consistent with it because it was my choice so yeah that's why I dress this way it's not because it's not because I was forced to, it was because I wanted to. I like the modesty, I like the structure, I like the rules, most of the rules. <laughs> and I prefer it, I prefer this life over the civilian life. I prefer Islamic life over civilian life, I prefer military life over civilian life. All that civilian life is just, it's not for me, it's too wild, it's too unorganized, it's too chaotic. It's and I just don't want it. But I do get why other people like it. I do, I do get why people don't want the rules and they don't want anyone or any belief, any idea, anything telling them what they need to be doing. I get that. Um, it's just not the life that I choose for myself. So I think I answered all the questions, why I dress this way, because people have asked me, why do I wear a scarf? Why do I dress this way? That's why I dress this way. 
um, how I became Muslim. A lot of Muslims ask me, how do I pray in my van? I could stand up in my van. I just have to crouch a little bit. But when I'm praying, I'm still standing. I'm just like crouched down a little bit, but I'm standing, I'm doing what I can do. Sometimes if I'm at a campground, like I'm at right now with the beet harvest, I will stand outside and pray. If it's private, if I don't have people all around me and I feel safe enough to do it without being harassed, I'll pray outside. And when I lived in my Buick, I prayed in my driver's seat. I just prayed in my driver's seat. I spoke to someone who has more knowledge on Islam than I do. And they said that I, that is permissible with the lifestyle that I'm living. So I did not just start doing it on my own. I spoke to a knowledgeable Muslim um, when learning, when trying to figure out how to pray in my car and pray in my van. So that's how I pray. A lot of Muslims ask me, how do I practice Islam? Everything else is the same outside of praying a little bit differently. Outside of praying in my seat when I lived in a car, practicing Islam is exactly the same. There's no different. For Ramadan, I fast. You just don't eat or drink. You can do that anywhere in any situation. So I practice Ramadan exactly the same, exactly the same. If I want to go to a masjid, I just go to a masjid. I Google the nearest masjid and I go to it if I'm near one. It's very easy. There's no difference in practicing Islam, living this lifestyle, except the way that you pray. But I spoke to someone about that and they told me how to pray in this situation. Yeah, so that is my conversion story. And that is for all my Muslim and for all my Muslim viewers, that is how I practice Islam in this lifestyle. Again, I hope I did not offend anyone. I have love for everyone watching this video. I appreciate you all being so respectful to me and I, I will always try to be respectful to you. And again, I'm only even talking about this because I've been asked a gazillion times about this so many times, so, so many times by a lot of non-Muslims, which is really surprising. So that's my conversion story. Next, let's talk about the veganism thing. <laughs> so I want to start by saying that I have not once ever called myself vegan on this channel. If you think about it, if you look at any of my videos, I never ever call myself vegan. And the reason why is because I'm not vegan. Now, some of you are going to roll your eyes at the next thing that I say, but I just have to clarify this because I'm not vegan. I'm plant-based. <laughs> Some of you are going to roll your eyes and say, well, what's the difference? They're the same. There is a difference. I didn't know that at first, but a lot of people online in the past made sure I was aware of the difference. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a little bit. But when I say plant-based, I mean the original definition of plant-based, which means that you only eat plant foods. Because I know that people right now are starting to change the definition of plant-based. I've seen a lot of people who eat fish and who eat chicken, but they're still saying that they're plant-based. I guess they're trying to say that the base of their diet is plants and then they eat animal products sometime. You know, I know definitions of things change over time, so it is what it is. I just want to explain that when I say I'm plant-based, it's the original definition of it. So I don't eat animal products. The difference between plant-based and veganism is that veganism is low. Vegans don't believe animals should be eaten. They don't believe animals should be slaughtered to feed humans. I do not share that belief. I believe that animals can be slaughtered and eaten by humans. I just don't I just don't want to do it. I don't want to be a part of it. But that is why I'm okay with Musa eating animal products, raising animals, slaughtering them himself, and cooking it and eating it. Because I I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that. Plant-based people eat plant foods mostly for health reasons. Vegans eat plant foods for the animals. That's the main difference. So that's the first thing I want to clear up, but you can call me vegan in the comments. Everyone does. It's fine. It's, it's completely fine. It's easier. I'm not about to explain that I'm plant-based every single time someone calls me vegan in the comments. <laughs> People usually will say, how long have you been vegan? And I'll respond by saying, oh, I've been plant-based since 2015. That's typically how I handle it. Now, how did I come about this lifestyle? Years ago, I had health issues. I have an issue with things growing inside of me. I get growths inside of my body. Every time I would go to the doctor and get checked and get ultrasounds and everything, I would have growths inside of me. One time I got checked and my doctor said it looked like I had a tumor that could be serious and she wanted to take it out. So I had surgery, everything was benign, it was not a tumor. She cleaned me up, she, she, said it, she said I was a mess in there. Everything was a mess, but she removed everything and cleaned me all up. It was maybe, in my, it was at my post-op, maybe three months, no more than three months post-op, whenever my post-op um, visit was. I got checked again after this doctor said she cleaned the heck out of my insides 
and I already had more growths in me. That was very frustrating. I went to other doctors and all the doctors told me the same thing. They said you're either gonna have to take this kind of pill for the rest of your life to help with it, or you're gonna have to have surgery every few years to have the growths cut out of you. I said, oh, neither of those are the options that I want. So I started looking up ways to heal myself naturally. And that's when I learned about plant-based living. I watched a bunch of documentaries. I read a bunch of books. I read every book I could find. The China Study. A lot of us read the China Study. So I definitely read the China Study. And I read so many other books. I watched literally every single vegan documentary that came out on Earth. I watched all of them. And then I watched all the YouTubers. And I listened to a bunch of stories of people who reversed their disease or health condition by eating this way and I decided I was going to do it so that's what I started doing and I, and I transitioned slowly because I knew this wasn't going to be a temporary thing I wanted to, this to be my way of life so I transitioned slowly I, I had already really um, I had already removed pork from my diet because I was Muslim at this point then I removed beef then chicken then seafood then cheese and it wasn't really difficult for me because I'm not, I was not a big fan of meat anyways, especially chicken. I rarely fully ate chicken, especially if it was on the bone, it grossed me out. When you start to see that dark purple burgundy looking vein, I couldn't do it. When I ate wings, I would literally suck the sauce off, eat the skin, and I would waste all the meat. It was so wasteful. But I didn't really like meat anyway, so getting rid of everything wasn't hard at all. And I, to this day, I do not crave it. Cheese was the hardest thing for me to get rid of but eventually I did. And then I was eating fully plant-based and after a while, I went to the doctor again to get a checkup and she said there was nothing on the ultrasound. I had no growths. I was really, really strict right now and I was really strict with my, with my eating habits back then. Right now, I'm a little more lenient. If I crave bread, I'll eat bread. You know, if I want something pre-made, some pre-made hummus, I'll buy, I'll buy pre-made hummus. But when I was trying to heal myself, I was very strict. Almost everything was homemade. My hummus was homemade, my salad dressings were homemade, my bread was homemade, everything was homemade. Yeah, I did not play, I did not play around. And I cleared, and I cleared myself up. And just to make sure that that doctor wasn't tripping, even though I loved that doctor and she was great, I went to two other doctors sep during, you know, a couple years apart. But I ended up going to two different doctors later and I lied to them and I pretended like I was having the issues that I used to have back when I kept back when I kept having growths occurring in my body. So I went to these doctors and I told them, oh, this is happening, I'm experiencing this. I knew all the things to say to get them to check me out. And both doctors came back when they got the results and they looked at me like I was just the stupidest hypochondriac ever. And they were saying, we didn't see anything. What are you talking about? There was nothing, nothing on the scan showed anything. And I was secretly so excited. I was like, I did not care. Like I felt embarrassed that they thought I was a hypochondriac. At least that's how I felt. So I felt a little embarrassed, but on the inside, I was so ecstatic. I said, oh, this is really working. So that was it. That was all I needed to, that was all I needed to know, to know that this was the lifestyle for me. And I did tell my story to one person one time and she responded with, oh, it's great that you think that that's what helped you, you know, that you want to eat that way because you think that's what did it. And she was being so passive aggressively condescending, but um, she can hate all she wants. The proof is in the ultrasound. I know I cleared up my issue with the way that I'm eating. I know it because never in my life, never had I ever gotten a scan that didn't show growths. Never in my life not until I went plant-based, the first time in my life that had ever happened. So that little hater can think what she wants, but I know it was my lifestyle choices. I also want to say that I don't think that the whole world needs to be plant-based. I do believe that there are many ways to be healthy. I have seen people who said that they cured their cancer, their diabetes, all sorts of things, diseases and health conditions by eating other ways that included animal products and I'm not gonna sit here and gaslight them and belittle their experience. So I don't think that plant-based is the only way to help a health condition. I really think it's mostly the processed foods that's killing us faster. I feel like if we eat mostly whole foods as local and organic as we can, which isn't easy for a lot of us, but we do what we can do. But if we eat whole foods, you know, real chicken, not some kind of processed chicken, not some kind of deli meat chicken or whatever that has a bunch of chemicals in it you know just eat real chicken real vegetables 
fresh vegetables, eat mostly whole foods, and be active, I feel like a lot of our health conditions would dissipate. I'm not saying it would cure everything, but I feel like a lot of health conditions, maybe even the majority of health conditions, in my unprofessional opinion, I know I have doctors who watch my channel so you can give your input as well, but in my, but in my unprofessional opinion, I feel like it's the processed foods really that's killing us. Eating whole foods could help a lot of health conditions. So I do want to say that I'm not trying to push plant-based on anyone. I feel like it's just eating whole foods. I was making everything from scratch. Everything. And I'm a little bit more lenient now. When I have a homestead, I do plan to go back to being a little bit more strict. Solely because I like it. I like, I'm a cook. I like making food from scratch anyways. I think it's awesome. I feel like a little... I feel like a mad scientist in the kitchen, you know, mixing everything and having all of my jars of preserves and all that stuff. So with, when I have the homestead, I do plan to eat more like that. It's just that in van life and car life, it was, it's more convenient for me to include a little bit more processed foods in my diet. Now, you know, I'm not gonna beat myself up over it. For the most part, I still eat mostly whole foods. Yeah, and that's my story. That's how I became plant-based. That is why I eat the way that I eat. Will I eat this way forever? probably sometimes back in the day i used to tell myself that i might start including bivalve mollusks in my diet bivalve mollusks are scallops oysters um mussels clams things like that because i'm not a real big on seafood either i'm not big on eating things that that look like they remind me of people you know that have eyeballs <laughs> if it has eyeballs I don't know, it scares me to eat it. I feel like I'm eating a human. I don't know, I know that sounds very dramatic and crazy. I get it, yes, yes. But that's what it reminds me of, eating things with eyeballs. I don't like it. If I ever ate any kind of animal animal product again, it would only be bivalve mollusks. Maybe ghee, which is clarified butter because I've been studying Ayurveda over the last few years. But I don't really, I don't like butter enough to think I will include ghee in my diet, I don't know. I'm probably just gonna be plant-based forever. But I don't say concretely that I will be just because I in the past I would I did mention bivalve mollusks and I have mentioned ghee, consuming ghee sometimes. But I feel like I told Musa that one day and Musa was like, I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> and he might be right. He, I might just stick to plant-based forever because I love it. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I don't. If I ever do, then maybe I'll reconsider. But at this moment, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. So that's that. I think I answered all the questions about my conversion story and my health journey and why I eat this way. I'm so glad I finally made this video because I get so many questions and I really was. I know it might sound ridiculous to you all, but you know, it can be scary putting yourself out here on the internet with so many opinionated people. I'm opinionated too. Someone recently told me I'm opinionated. I think you deleted your comment if you still watch my channel. But someone recently told me that I'm, I'm opinionated and I am. I don't mean to come off rude. I never mean to come off rude when I state my opinion. So I apologize if anything I said came off rude. It's not my intention. I am opinionated, but you know, it's my YouTube channel. I feel like it's the one place I can say my opinion. I don't go on other people's channels giving my opinion and trying, trying to tell them what to do. I don't think that's right <laughs> unless they ask for it. Some YouTubers ask for their viewers opinion. Yeah, it, it's scary. It is scary putting yourself out here with so many opinionated people. And especially when you're talking about religion. Religion. Religion is so hated right now. It is so hated. And dietary choices. People go, heck, keto. No, keto is the best carnivore. Like, I don't want to get a bunch of carnivore comments. Ooh, I just had me a fat but bloody steak. You know? Like I see comments like that on on vegan channels and I'm just thinking, why man? Just go eat your steak. Just eat your steak and be happy. So I was scared. I was genuinely scared to talk about these two topics, but I'm glad I did it and I got it over with. And that's it. I'm not gonna talk about these topics again. You guys know I'm Muslim because I wear my scarf. You know I'm plant-based because you see how I eat. That'd be the only, that's the only way you're going to know about these things. I don't talk about religion on my channel. I don't talk about diet on my channel. It's not gonna happen again. I don't plan for it to happen again because they're just too touchy of, of they're just too touchy of topics, and 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 plus it's just personal for me, and I don't I don't want to talk about it. So for those of you who are interested in those two stories, I hope that I quenched your thirst. I hope that you're satisfied with what I've shared with you, and thank you for watching this video. 
I gotta get ready for work at the beet harvest. And like I said before, if you didn't watch part one, the next few videos on this channel are just gonna be sit down talking videos because I'm gonna be working 12 hours a day, every single day without a day off for most of October. I am not going to have time to film vlogs and edit vlogs and do all of that stuff. So it's easier for me to just do sit down videos so that you guys can still get content for those of you who care to hear what I have to say and who want sit down videos. And you know, you don't have to go weeks without a video. Yeah, so hopefully you understand why you won't be getting vlogs for a little bit. But after I'm done with the beet harvest, I'm gonna put out my last few California vlogs and then we'll be a little bit more caught up and up to date on my life and where I'm currently at in real life. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you for being kind in the comments. I know you guys are gonna be kind in the comments. Please be kind in the comments. <laughs> yeah, and I'll see you in another video. All right, I'm gonna go try to take a nap before I work this night shift and I'll see you in another video, hopefully. I hope you have a good day, a good evening, a great week, and thank you for being here. Bye.